believe it. Um, after weeks and weeks of rain and cloud and everything, it's it's finally got a clear night. It was actually clear last night and it's going to be clear, I think, a bit tonight. I don't know how long for. I'm hoping till about midnight. So um, I'm so keen to get back to do some more astrophotography. It's just felt like ages having done so. Um, it's probably just weeks, but you know what? Yeah, I think people who are doing astrophotography know what it's like. Um, you get withdrawal um, very quickly. So um, tonight I've decided to go for a galaxy. We're still not quite at the point where the nebulae are coming in to get a good time to image there. You know, Orion's coming up and it's well after midnight, so it's nice to be able to do something for the hours before um, midnight. And the best thing to look for at the moment is galaxies. So I'm going to image NGC 1097, which is a barred spiral galaxy. It's about 45 million light years away um, in the constellation of Fornax. Um, and it's actually interacting with a companion galaxy, 1097A, and there is apparently a tidal stream between the two. So um, I'm going to capture that in um, LRGB. I uh, haven't decided whether they'd put add in some HA. I might do a few HA frames just to see whether or not that's adding anything to it or not. Um, and um, at the moment, the moon, it's a waning gibbous moon. Um, but it's not up until about one o'clock in the morning so if I can go till about then that would be great. So I'm going to continue to shoot with the uh, Mead 10 inch uh, SCT and the ASI 2600mm Pro and the Antlia 3 nanometer filters so um, fingers crossed it stays uh, clear long enough for me to catch a few frames. Okay, so it's supposed to be clear again tonight. Um, this will be the third night I've had imaging on this galaxy. The first night I did get a full night's imaging, which was fantastic. Um, but the second night the clouds came in about one o'clock. It is forecast to be clear all night by most of the forecasts. Uh, but the Clear Outside app says it's clouding up at one o'clock. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, yeah, I think if it, stay, if it does stay clear all night, I'll be able to finish this target tonight, I hope. Um, it's kind of mind-blowing to think that uh, the light that is about to enter this telescope uh, and land on the sensor um, of the camera left 45 million years ago. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, really. It's time-travelling from your backyard without actually leaving your backyard. So, um, yeah, what could be better? Um, anyway, fingers crossed. It stays clear. Jupiter's just coming over the roof here of the observatory and um, we'll uh, hope that the sky watcher gets a good imaging session as well. Okay so this is night four imaging this target. Um, I've had a couple of full nights. When I say full nights it's about four in the morning and uh, one that went to about one o'clock in the morning. I'm hoping I've got about 15 hours on this target so far. Um, I haven't looked at last night's subs, so I'm not sure what, what I can and can't keep. I know some clouds came in towards the end and uh, I've lost a few because I have seen some of the blue filter not looking so good. But I'm hoping to finish that off tonight. It's um, in theory going to be a full night's imaging. Again, the forecasts are a little bit at odds with each other. Uh, clear outside is saying it's going to be clear all night. Last night it said it was going to be cloudy, but it was actually clear all night. And our local forecast says it's going to be cloudy overnight, so we'll see. Well, as it turned out, I managed to capture 27 hours of LRGB and HA. I had no idea that I'd captured that amount. Um, but anyway, here's the final image here. Now it looks a little bit messier and a little bit noisier than normal. The reason being is I wanted to retain some features that I wanted to talk about now, which I thought were interesting about the galaxy rather than going through the processing, which actually took me quite a while to do to try and get the balance between the galaxy looking all right and maintaining some of these other little interesting features. So look, this is NGC 1097 and it's a barred spiral galaxy and in the centre there's a supermassive black hole about a hundred million times the mass of our sun. And then this glowing bright ring around the um, black hole is uh, due to a couple of things. One is a lot of radiation coming out from the material that's flowing into the black hole 
but also because of this concentration of material, there's a lot of star formation going on, so it's glowing from, from all the stars. Now, this galaxy has been quite interesting for supernova hunters because between 1992 and 2003, so over an 11 year period, three supernova have been identified and so I'm guessing that people are keeping a, a close eye on this galaxy to see if any more pop up. It is interacting with a couple of galaxies. This is one of them here, NGC 1097A. It's a small elliptical galaxy and there is a sort of a stream of debris and stuff interacting between the two of them. And off frame here somewhere is um, NGC 1097B, which I didn't, didn't get to see in the image, but uh, it's interacting with those galaxies. This um, galaxy also has some sort of streams coming off. It kind of looks like jets, but I think again they're titled sort of streams. This is one of them here coming right out here and then this is an interesting one. It comes down here and it does a dog leg up like that. And that is actually real, it's not a processing artifact that's been well, um, well documented. And um, they've found that in these streams there are lots and lots of stars. All these are made up of, of stars. And uh, they have found remnants of a dwarf galaxy here. So they, they believe that these are formed by the interaction with other dwarf galaxies. And this one's just got an interesting dog leg appearance to it by the way it reacted or interacted with the dwarf galaxy that has now just got remnants of it. There's a couple of streams coming out here, which I, you can't really see in this image. I inverted the image. And you can see this one here coming out there, this one coming down and doing the dog leg. And believe it or not, that's the other one. That's number three. There is number four. I'm not sure. I think it might be up here somewhere or down here. I'm not sure, but I never really got to see it. But I have checked with other images and that is indeed the, the actual place of, of where uh, the, the third jet is. So I've just labeled these up here so you can see three of them. But fortunately, I, I didn't really managed to get enough data to capture, uh, to show up number four. But anyway, I thought there was sort of quite some interesting features about um, this barred spiral galaxy that's in the Fornax um, constellation. And um, yeah, look, hopefully you found this video uh, interesting. Um, if you have, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, um, consider subscribing, have a look at the other videos that I've done. Now, some of you will also have seen that I did a part one on converting my um, observatory mount over to a dual side-by-side -side telescope system. And a lot of this video was recorded, as I said, over about a month ago, and I'm only just tidying it up now because whilst I would have liked to have collected more data, um, the weather has just, you know, turned to custard. So uh, we're, we're looking at about eight or 10 days of thunderstorms and, and heavy rain. So I thought I would process what I've, what I've got so far and get this video out but so part one I did sort of setting up the hardware well, putting the two telescopes on the mount and I recorded that and, and put that out uh, a few days ago part two is coming um, I was waiting on one more piece of hardware which has arrived and is now um, on the telescope mount and as soon as I get a clear night whenever that will be um, I will do a video and show you how it's all working and how the synchronized tethering is working in the inner, etc. So that will be coming soon. But uh, look, until then, I'll leave you with NGC 1097 and I hope you're all getting me some clear skies. Thank you.